it's not a matter of if we're going to experience a major public health emergency through which new ethics norms are going to be essential. It's a matter of when. Many of these military and security technologies raise critical ethical questions. Uh, society, for example, has begun to question the use of drones. Those are ethical questions. They're governance questions and they're legal questions. And understanding them and being able to respond ethically to the challenges of modern conflict is critical. Hurricane Katrina in 2005. Devastating public health impacts. The 2009-2010 H1M1 pandemic. Just horrific international impacts, all of which require a new ethics paradigm. It is the social and the cultural context within which the technology is used that is critical to determining how ethical its use is. What the next step will be, what the next threat will be, is it's from bioterrorism, nuclear detonations, we don't know that. But what we do know is we've got to be ethically prepared for it because if we're not, we will lose lives and we will have to blame ourselves for that outcome. If we had to describe what uh, applied ethics does for the human race, it is that it provides a structure, a kind of architecture, in which people can make good decisions that will affect all of our lives. For me, ethics is about preventing conflicts, and if they do arise, resolving those conflicts in ways that enable us all to maintain our dignity and our grace. Well, the Lincoln Center is a very unique uh, operation at Arizona State University that involves Lincoln professors and fellows working on issues in applied ethics and uh, their implications and their application. Our five core areas at the Lincoln Center are emerging technologies, applied sustainability, human rights, education, and public health. The Lincoln Center for Applied Ethics at Arizona State University is a unique organization because it brings together both practitioners and academicians to learn about ethics and to teach ethics in a way that's joint. That you don't just get the academics looking at it and you don't just get the policymakers, but you get them working together. So it really brings these issues to life. We're taking ethics norms that might exist in some sort of stratosphere and in various different capacities we're applying them in real-world settings because that's where ethics belong. I want you to think about the global pandemic that we saw in 2009 and 2010, specifically what we know of as the H1N1 pandemic. That's the type of public health emergency I'm talking about. How do we respond to those specific issues through prevention strategies? How do we respond through ethically sound policies? We brought together with guidance from a lot of different persons, a core group, a focus group of various different practitioners in health, in medicine, public health, emergency management from across the state of Arizona. Sitting down with that group, our objective was very clear and simple. Let's drill down and determine what are the core ethics principles in emergencies that we subscribe to in this state. We say specifically what they mean and how to implement them so that a practitioner that doesn't have a lot of time in the throes of a major emergency, that practitioner can look at this document and say, this is something I can use. What we want to take is this guidance that's very unique in, across the states because of its ability to actually create code language around these ethics norms. We want to ramp this up to the national level. The program that I run for the Lincoln Center is called the Consortium for Emerging Technologies, Military Operations, and National Security, or SETMANS. It's a consortium that includes schools such as Case Western Reserve, uh, Cal Poly, uh, North Texas, and what we do is we look at the ethical and social concerns around emerging military and security technologies. One of the things that we've tried to do with emerging technologies, because it is such a large and difficult field to get a hold of, is break it down into the different technologies and the impacts they have in different areas of society. 
So when you think about, for example, military technology, say a hummingbird-sized surveillance robot, what you want to do is understand not just the military implications, but the broader implications for national security and the implications when that technology gets back into civil society. Will it be used by divorce lawyers, for example? Will it be used by political parties? There's a huge ethical gap here, and it's one of the reasons that we created Setman's, and it's one of the reasons that the Lincoln Center is so critical. The Arizona Bioethics Network is a community of practice, which means that it's a, a kind of network of professionals who are involved in ethical decision making, who are now afforded an opportunity to be able to talk with each other, to share stories, to share best practices, to learn from each other, and to advance ethical patient care in a responsible manner. The Arizona Bioethics Network has a huge value for me in that it enables us to look at ethical issues from a larger uh, perspective. Within the diverse membership of the Arizona Bioethics Network, we've got a real great peer-to-peer -peer, uh, opportunity for conversation, discussion, and mentoring. Uh, this is really providing a value that not only is desired by the, the hospital systems, by the clinical partners, but actively supported by them as well. One of the things that we're able to do through the Bioethics Network is to talk to colleagues, get in, obtain their experiences vicariously, uh, and also share our own, work through problems in advance, so, so to speak, think about all the different aspects of the decision ahead of time. Ethical issues aren't just local or regional in character. There are lots of ethical issues that really affect us as a nation. The ethics of healthcare reform, for instance, the ethics of designing healthy communities. These are the kinds of issues that we think Arizona Bioethics Network can have a say on at the national level. Teaching Fellows program is taught by our Lincoln professors and fellows and they reach out to faculty on any of the ASU campuses and colleges and provide them the tools to integrate ethics into their current fields and curriculum or to develop new courses that deal with ethical implications and challenges. And when they bring that back to their classrooms, hundreds and thousands of students can be impacted by learning ethics in the field that they're in. Lincoln Center has some amazing collaborative efforts between our Lincoln professors and fellows as well as within the staff of the Lincoln Center. One of my personal favorites of that is our annual Lincoln Ethics Symposium that we hold and four Lincoln professors and fellows come together and the high school students love to get involved and interact with all of our different professors. And that I think is one of our best examples of everybody coming together within the Lincoln Center and providing a premier program that reaches out to high school students. Ethics isn't just something that they read in a book or they might get an hour in their math class, but they actually can understand it and realize real world applications. Ultimately, the younger you start, the better it will be for all of us because ethics will be part of the fabric of their lives. The Lincoln Center has done something that no other university has ever accomplished in, in applied ethics, and that is it has found people of incredible stature within their own fields who are deeply devoted to the ethical issues that arise in those fields, and it has been able to put them together and provide a kind of, of center, a kind of base for them to do the good work that they've been doing. One of the really interesting questions that my study raises is how we can create a better world, a world where people behave better, where companies behave better, where practices and institutions lead to a less dangerous, less violent, uh, and happier world for everybody. <laughs>